I was doing everything that I knew to do to care for my little sister, but there was definitely a disconnect because I was still grieving myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, while trying to help her through her process, you know, I kind of put myself on the back burner. Hey family, I'm Patrice Curry and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Hey family, welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Patrice, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Man, I, you appreciate it. I'm super excited that you are here. I'm like freaking out right now because it's like, oh my God, Patrice Curry, it's going to be on my podcast. Like, how awesome is this? How awesome is this? So I like to start off every conversation with just talking about how I come to know the person that I'm having a conversation with. And this episode is no different. So me and you having this conversation today is literally an example of, you know, six degrees of separation in, in process. <laughs> like, like, seriously, I know you guys have heard of that before, that you are literally six people away from knowing somebody. And right. like with Patrice and I, it's like one person. It's like one degree. <laughs> <laughs> What degree? Patrice and I have a mutual friend, which is my friend, but more like family for you, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like your husband's cousin's wife. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, so she's my cousin. So she's your cousin. Right. <laughs> but um, but yeah, but but we have also had the opportunity to kind of like hang out way back when at an event that mm-hmm. Donna and I shout out to Donna for arranging. Um this conversation with, between us today but we also had a chance to hang out a little bit because you showed up with Donna at an event that we was working at right a while back and we hung out at um Papa Do's wasn't that Papa Do's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We, ha- we hung out at Papa Do's and so but that was like way before I had started the podcast so mm-hmm. when Donna was like you know what you should have Patrice on your podcast I was just like really <laughs> like, you, like you think so you think she'll say yes <laughs> and, and you did and so here we are here we are <laughs> here we are so let's just go ahead and address the obvious right let's just go ahead and address the what everybody is is thinking and wondering so you're married to eddie curry who's mm-hmm. a former nba star right Mm-hmm. He played for the Bulls. He played for the Knicks, the Miami Heat. Did he play for any right. Bulls? Uh, sh- for a little bit, a couple, a little bit of time, he played for um, the Spurs after the. For the Spurs, okay. Played for the Spurs, and then you was also on Basketball Wise LA. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. And I won. So, I'm curious to know, um, have you gotten has your identity got lost behind eddie curry like do people address you as eddie curry's wife or do they address you as patrice you know i think it depends on the setting that i'm in um Mm -hmm. most definitely in the basketball world yeah depending on who you're around you're um eddie curry's wife you know um but Depending on where I am, um, I, it doesn't matter where I am. I'm always who I am. So mm-hmm. you might begin to address me in that way. But, mm-hmm. you know, by the time the conversation is over, you know who I am. And I'm a lot more than just, you know, some man's wife. I, I know that's right. You better say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why. So tell us, who is Patrice Curry? You know, well, I'm definitely a wife. Um, I'm a mother. I am a sister and a friend. I am um, a child of God. 
Mm-hmm. I am an artist. Uh, I paint. I sew. Um, I do makeup and hair. Do hair, um, yeah. I'm a chef. I'm a nurse. I might as well be a nurse, right? Because I'm a mother. Yeah, um, I guess so. <laughs> uh, I have been known to be a detective. Like, I know my kids hate it right now, but it is what it is. Um, I'm a lot of things. I'm a writer. Okay. Um, you know, I'm an actress. I just haven't got my big break yet. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. It is. It's I coming. believe it. It is. We want to touch and agree. That is okay. Coming. Right. Touch and agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you meet Eddie? That story is kind of crazy. So um, maybe a year and a half before he was drafted, mm-hmm. I was presented the opportunity to work for the Bulls. Mm-hmm. Um, prior to I that, I was, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> right? Prior to that, I was working at a hotel that was next door to their practice facility. Okay. And um, so I met a lot of the coaches and, you know, a lot of the management from within the organization because that is where they house their players. Mm-hmm. Little did I know this when I got the job, but that's where they house their players. Mm-hmm. When they were um, bringing them in for tryouts or um, in between helping them find a home once they came onto the team. So this was right after Michael Jordan retired. Mm. And um, after he retired, the lady who um, whose position I took over, she mm-hmm. left the company also so that, you know, they came and asked me if I wanted the position. And honestly, I almost didn't take it. Really? Um, Why yeah. that? I had a boyfriend at the time (laughs) and he was, uh, really jealous and, um, that was a crazy relationship, but, uh, he's the reason why I almost didn't take the job because, you know, he was already bothered by the fact that I was working at the hotel and, um, meeting all of these guys and I am a helper, you know, Mm -hmm. so I, Anytime somebody needs something, you know, I'm, I try to be available and able if I'm willing. If I'm able to, then I'm always willing to help. So I just, you know, made friends with these guys. And, um, you know, sometimes we'd hang out after I broke up. We, I was just friends with all of me and my cousins would go to the clubs and kick it with the players and mm-hmm. get in for free. And I was, a, <laughs> I was in college, you know, it's having fun, living yeah. life. And, you know, he was not in college and um so he just wasn't mindset too yeah he just mindset. was like uh no you know and I don't know he pissed me off one day shortly after they asked me if I wanted the job and then I called them like yeah I do I want the job mm-hmm. so I started working there and then um I don't know maybe like a year and a half later Eddie was drafted and somewhere I can't honestly I can't remember when we met, you know, I know the draft is in, I think the draft is in June. I have and, no idea. Yeah, I think it's June. Mm-hmm. And um, so somewhere between the time he was drafted and, you know, October, we met. Um, and I don't know, he just was very persistent. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, um, I worked with uh, BJ Armstrong and Pete Myers, they were former Bulls players, but they okay. um, transitioned to management, you know, within the, the head of the house for the Bulls. Mm-hmm. And so they were like my little, my uncles, you know, we talked about everything. It wasn't a lot of us in the front office, you know, yeah. so yeah. Um, they, they helped, you know, they helped yeah. like, you should date him it'd be a good, a good thing for both of you. Like, you know, it was a lot of, uh, course. And, and then at some point, once we started dating and, you know, the word got out because he told everybody, <laughs> I tried to keep a secret, right. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to maintain my position at work and have my life outside of work. Um, but you know, he just, 
it's, it's funny how you as a woman was worried about your position, whereas, and so you just wanted to keep it on a down low, whereas him, he just wanted to just tell everybody because of, because of his position, it didn't even like cross his mind to like keep it on a down low. I mean, we discussed it. I told him, but, um, yeah, you know, I think it was more of like an ego thing for him. Ah. You know, it's a bunch of dudes. Everybody is like, who's that girl? You know, that kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. kind of like a everybody's on a quest. And he felt like, yeah, I got that. So, you know, <laughs> Ain't that I'm, I'm telling. But anyway, when so when the office staff found out, I had to have a meeting with the general manager. He's now deceased, you know, rest in peace, Jerry Krause. But he pulls me into his office and you know, he basically pulled us both in his office. Oh, okay. I was about to uh -huh. say, were you the only one who's, okay, And he's like, you know, I heard you guys are dating, you know, I think it's a good thing for the both of you. I had just lost my mother, so they probably felt like, you know, this is great for her, you know, he'll be able to help her through life or whatever if this works out, and um, they felt like I was good for him. You know, I was, I'm three and a half years older than him and, um, uh, maybe she'll be able to help him through things. And so, you know, he gave us our blessing, um, with the request that we keep work and private life separate. Okay. And, um, and then I'm pregnant. Mm. But before we, but before we go there, let's back up a little bit because you okay. did mention that, uh, at the time that you met him that you lost your mom. Mm -hmm. Let's talk let's talk about that because here on the podcast we always talk about well I know for me I share I'm open and transparent about different traumas that has gone on in in my life. And so and I know everybody's trauma is different. And mm -hmm. so with your mom like that was a a really traumatic experience. So do you mind yeah. going into to detail? I don't mind. I don't have any Kleenex in here. So I hope I don't cry. Okay. So, all right. So when I was um, 14, I was a freshman in high school. Mm -hmm. um, my mother told my older sister and I, who's my older sister's three and a half years older than me. So I was a freshman. She was a senior. And she told us that she had contracted HIV mm -hmm. from her fiance. Um, that was, I was 14. He died when I was, I think he probably died like two years later. Mm. Um, that was tough for me because, um, I hated him. Oh, I did. I hated him. And, um, so that just made the whole situation worse. Cause you well, I didn't hate him, him until then, you know, okay. I, didn't, okay. I didn't necessarily like him before then just mm -hmm. because, um, I didn't understand uh, her attraction to him. I don't know. He just was, he seemed weird to me, but I was a kid mm -hmm. and, you know, I was a respectful kid. So I kept my thoughts to myself. Mm -hmm. But um, when I find, found out that she was sick and it was because of him, and then I watched her care for him until um, maybe a week or two before he actually passed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just, as the days went on, I just liked him less and less because, um, I don't know. I felt like I was bearing witness to what was about to happen to my mother whenever it happened. And it bothered me that she was taking care of him, even though he was the reason that she was going to be in the same exact position. And, um, on the one hand, as I grew up and I realized, you know, that was what she was doing was more a lesson in love maybe um than anything else um i don't know i just i kind of resented her for it yeah oh i can i could totally i could totally understand that but how how so you was 22 so so he died when i was i think 16 or 17 maybe 16 mm -hmm. my mom um at some point between his death and the time that I was a senior in high school, started dating. Um, she came and told us that the condom broke and she was pregnant. And um, of course my thoughts are like, so what are you gonna do? 
Um, she said she was having her baby. She's like, I tried to get an abortion. I went to the clinic twice and I just couldn't do it. The first time I just, I couldn't do it. I had to leave the second time while I was laying on the table, her hand just ran across my belly as if she was saying hi. And you know, I, I couldn't do it. Ooh. So of course I'm worried. Like, you know, you're going to bring a baby into this world knowing that you're sick. Like, what about the baby? Like, who's going to take care of the baby? Like, you know, I'm thinking all of these things. And um, she was, she reassured us that she was taking her medication and that the baby would be fine. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, my little sister was born, you know, disease free. Oh, she she God. was born, she took her antivirals every day and, you know, she had a healthy baby. Oh, um, um, but my mother, that, that point when she got pregnant and started, you know, carrying to term, mm -hmm. that's when I could see the decline in her health begin to shift. Oh, wow. Um, it was as if all of her, every good thing that she had left, you know, to keep her healthy all went to the baby. Went to the baby. Oh, wow. And, you know, she never really truly recovered from it. So by the time my sister was from, born from and having half, your, from having my sister. From having your sister. Yeah. I mean, she never just, she never got back to herself, you know, yeah. her healthy looking, feeling mm -hmm. self. Mm -hmm. um, and she had been through a series of cocktails trying to find the right yeah. one for her. Yeah. Um, back then, this was, you know, the late nineties, 97, 90, she had my sister in 96, um, 96, 97, 98, 99. She died in 01. Um, it was a series of trial and error for the medication. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you take this set, if this works, cool. If it doesn't, these are going to be some side effects you might have and then, you know, come back and we'll try something else. So, um, by, uh, 2000, mm -hmm. November of 2000, mm -hmm. she had to spend all of November in the hospital. Um, the medicine was just, you know, really messing her up. She had like, um, developed stomach ulcers and her, uh, stomach was you know swollen and distended she looked like she was maybe like six months pregnant mm. um and she just was you know beginning to look like she was with her in a way yeah um so, so. I would go to work at the Bulls facility uh-huh um I was still in college at the time so I'm, I'm working in the suburbs yeah. um, living you know on the north side of Chicago then I have to go downtown Chicago to go to school um, in the evenings. And then from school, I would go to the hospital to stay there until they kick me out and go home and do it all over again. Um, wow. At the time, my mom's sister was present. So she was helping with my little sister. So, you know, my focus didn't have to be on her. Um, and so, so how was your how was your mindset? How, OK, first of all. From the time that your mom, your mom got really, really sick and she passed away, like what was the time frame between that and you meeting Eddie? So my mother died in August of um, 2001, uh -huh. August 23rd. And I, I can't remember if I met Eddie after that or before that. But definitely around that time. I think it was before. I think I met him in like June or July. Um, but yeah, so definitely around that time so you um, probably didn't become official until after oh for sure we weren't dating of your mom. yeah we weren't dating then at all so do you so so with that being said because that's a lot going on to see the deterioration of your mom mm -hmm. uh, for her to go through a a pregnancy and then for nine to ten months you know have this you know this this thing leering over her of whether or not she's going to pass this disease off to her child. Cause she truly did not know until I guess until she had the baby 
and then for your sister to be born, you lose your mom, and now there's there's a baby that's here. Like, what was your oh my god, like what was your mindset? Do you think that that your the what the monster that you was in had anything to do with the fact that you decided to be official with Eddie? Because before, you know, you wasn't really thinking about him. You had met him, but it wasn't like, eh. But then afterwards, you guys started dating. So do you think the death of your mom uh, affect, uh, influenced your decision? For sure. I have to say 100% I know that it did. Um, because I was just empty. Mm. Um, you know, I had buried my mother and then, I don't know. I just was, I had buried a piece of myself with her. Oh, I did not want to cry. And so, um, it definitely did play a role because I kind of felt like on the one hand, I, I, you know, I told him like, I I don't even want to deal with the athlete. Like I, I I know what y'all are, you know, I see this, I, I've done this enough. I know how it is. And, you know, he, he sure knew what to say. You know, he said all the right things. And I think part of him always meant what he said or wanted to mean what he said. And the other part of him just, you know, he's young and um, influential and uh, misguided. And um, I think that if I had not lost my mother, I for sure would have done things a lot differently. I, I never planned on having children outside of wedlock. Um, but, and, and my pregnancies, none of them were accidental. You know, was, I want to have a baby. And I'm like, ah, I'm not, I'm not ready for a baby, you know? And he's like, yeah, but, you know, I think it'd be good for us. And, you know, you won't have to work anymore and I'll take care of you. And I think God placed me in your lives to help you with your sister. and. Oh, you know, wow. um, he was saying all the right things. Yeah. And, yeah. and I just felt like, well, F it, you know, um, at this point, like maybe this is what I need, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I was doing everything that I knew to do to care for my little sister, but there was definitely a disconnect because I was still grieving myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, while trying to help her through her process, you know, I kind of put myself on the back burner. So I guess there was no therapy at that time. Not to, for me, to, for her, but not for me. No. Her as in your sister? Yeah. Mm. Cause I still worked for the team at the time and, mm-hmm. you know, they have, um, doctors on staff and psychiatrists and all that. So I definitely did my due diligence to, speak with them and figure out what I needed to do to help her, you know, get through this in a healthy way. But why not yourself, Patrice? Why you didn't do the same for yourself? Um, why? That's that's a million dollar question, huh? Yeah, I guess I kind of just felt like, you know, she needed it more than I did. Hmm. I'm not supposed to be crying. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. (laughs) Um, you know, but that's, that's really tough. And the sad part is, is that we all go through that. Like we all, we, as in women, we tend to put our loved ones before ourselves. Like Mm -hmm. we would sacrifice self first to make sure our children are okay. Our siblings are okay. Our parents are okay. Any, our husbands, anybody that we love, we would sacrifice self first. And no, my mom uh, didn't die of HIV AIDS. However, mm-hmm. you know, I can sympathize with you because for yeah. a long time, I sacrificed myself for the betterment of, you know, my loved ones. And it just got to a point where it's like, I had to realize that in order to help them, I needed to help me first. Right. I needed to help me first. For sure. And um, it took, it took a long time for me to get to that point, you know, Mm -hmm. where, Mm -hmm. um, where I just felt like I need to worry about me too. And all of this, you know, it took, it took a while. Um, It actually took 
more trauma for me to get there. <sighs> which is a lot of our stories as well, you mm -hmm. know, it, which is a lot of our stories as well. Um, oh my goodness, I don't, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, I just don't have <laughs> Kleenex in here. <laughs> so, I'm using, you know, okay. a beauty blender, sorry. It's okay. You gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. You know, this is why I, you know, I coach when I coach women. I make sure that they have gone through the healing process because, mm -hmm. you know, when we when we let trauma go unresolved and we move on with our lives and we become successful, right? Or we get into relationships uh, where uh, they're like the perfect relationship. This is everything that I want and that I need at the time what we fail to realize is that that unresolved trauma is still affecting our decisions and it's affecting how we show up in the world, even For though sure. we decide that we're going to move on. So it has mm -hmm. to be, it has to be dealt with. And just like you, it, it took a process for me too. It, it took time for me to get to the point where it's like, okay, Key, you need to, you need to work on, you need to work on you first, mm -hmm. you know, but just like you, other trauma happened you know, because I was still in that healing process, mm -hmm. you know? So what was some of the trauma, the additional trauma that you experienced? Um, just in um, dating my husband. Mm. Um, it just was, I, I don't know, I kind of just felt like a clown for falling for the okie doke, if we're going to put it bluntly, you know? Yeah. I kind of felt like, like I just slapped myself in the face. Like you, you knew, you know, you knew better and you did it anyway. Like you knew what these athletes were about, you know, what they are about, you know, you know, they're greedy, you know, they're selfish, you know, they, you know, take whatever they can get and you still poured everything into this and you know, I didn't put any of it into myself. Mm. Um, and so just dealing with the infidelity and um, the lying and, the, you know, um, just the loneliness that comes along with that. Yeah. Um, raising kids, not having a mom, you know, there with me. I mean, my stepmom was present enough, but, you know, it's nothing like your own mom your mother mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um I don't know it just uh, so you know it was all of that and then when he had his big <laughs> um I don't know if you're familiar you know with the his son's mom and his daughter being murdered um actually i i think i i remember seeing a, a episode on uh one of the crime shows like it was um <laughs> fatal attraction fatal attraction yeah yeah i um honestly i hated that show because it was so filled with lies um you know it's funny how that the media and, and shows like that can get wrong you know a few years back my one and a half year old niece was murdered mm -hmm. and of course there was news coverage about it and mm -hmm. everything Sorry. was everything was wrong they yeah. you know they you know um villainized my brother made it seem like he wasn't there as mm -hmm. if he wasn't a grieving father he was there the whole family was there you know mm -hmm. it, it was it's just crazy how they just got it completely wrong so i i can definitely sympathize with that yeah and they get it wrong and then they they crucify you mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on the lies that somebody else told yeah and for a long time you know all of that stuff really was damaging for me because I wasn't I was still not healing myself you know mm -hmm. and I was still yeah. um I just felt like damn like you know what else what else is gonna happen like what else do I have to go through when is it just going to be good, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, that that was really tough as well. Um, I felt like just the culmination of all of those events, learning things that I <laughs> didn't know that I would have loved to have known prior to, like just being lied to for so long is 
um, it's troubling, you know, it's, it's, it's a poison. Um, when you take somebody's, uh, heart for granted and, and then, then, then there's me on the other side, having to, again, put myself to the side to do what's better for everybody else's greater good, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm um, always trying to just do what I think God would want me to do, even if sometimes it's hurting myself. It's kind of how I felt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what, Patrice, you are a strong woman, sis. Let me just tell you that right now, because I know a lot of people who are listening are probably like, man, she, you know, she's been through a lot. Why did she stay? Why she didn't get out or whatever? But it takes a lot of strength, strength to fight for, you know, what you want, you know, um, especially when it comes to, to your marriage and, you know, being married to an athlete, being a basketball wife, uh, being on a reality show. I'm pretty sure people have um, conjured up their own notions of mm-hmm. who Patrice, you know, who Patrice is, right? Right. So is there a particular misconception people have about you that you would want to clear up? I think if I'm going to clear, well, I, you know what? I bet <laughs> I would imagine there's a lot of misconceptions about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and gosh, it was a point in time where it mattered, where I felt like mm. I needed to clear that up. Like, that's not true. I can't let people say that about me. And mm. I don't want people saying this about me. But at the end of the day, even when you, I learned that even when you speak your peace, you know, even when you speak your truth, mm-hmm. um, don't nobody want to hear that. They, they want to run with the <laughs> lies anyway. So it's not like, yeah oh man no she said this and this is true no they still think you're lying so um I guess I've gotten to the point where I just don't give a damn no more about what people think about me and mine at the end of the day um I'm moving to do what I have to do so that Mm -hmm. I make it to heaven when I'm done here on earth and Mm -hmm. that might not be that may not look like your you know your path and it right. and it ain't gonna be her path and it won't be his path mm-hmm. um but it is what it is you know it's my path and my husband knew when when we got to the point that we were dating mm-hmm. that um having a child me having his child kind of um sealed the deal for me I did not I I, I always he knew I told him that I never wanted to have uh, children by different fathers. I didn't want to deal with that, um, separating my kids for holidays and, you know, visits and all of that kind of junk. Um, he knew what he was doing. Um, he, you know, uh, and so I kind of felt like I put myself in this position, you know, I could have waited. I could have taken my time. I could have, um, waited to see what was going to happen, um, with, with his growth, you know, Mm -hmm. but I made the decision in, out of my own selfish, uh, thought process. I just was thinking, you know, maybe me having a baby will really like spark a fire in me and let me understand what, you know, true love really is. And Mm. it did, you know, at the time, it really did. Right, right. Um, but you know what? I'm pretty sure there's other women out there that feel that, you know, that feel that exact same way, you know? And again, the unresolved trauma that's affecting, you know, the decisions and the mindset. So, right. and, and, and the additional trauma, you know, on top of that. Right. So how, how are you healing from all of that? Because I truly believe that God doesn't give us more than what we can handle. Right. I truly, I truly believe that. So even though you have gone through everything that you have gone through, you know, God made you strong enough where you can handle it. Right. He's, he's your, 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 your source of strength, but how are you healing from the trauma? Because there still needs to be some healing that needs to be done. Yeah, for sure. You know, I've, I've done it all, you know, I've done Mm -hmm. individual counseling, 
That's we've good. done uh, marriage, you know, together counseling mm-hmm. with a husband and wife team. Okay. Um, we've done um, don't talk to me at all. Um, <laughs> I've done, um, I, I've taken some healing classes. Actually, one of the, um, one of the doctors at the time mm-hmm. for the Knicks, um, she gave me this information I was able to log in and take this class it was called um I think it was called something like generational healing mm. that was a wonderful class I, I took notes that I sounds wish I, amazing it was wonderful it was definitely I mean it's probably um part of the reason why I'm still in my marriage honest to God because mm. um because there were times where I just was like I got to go I can't do this shit you know Mm-hmm. And, but, but that class, um, so it was, I don't even know if they're still doing it. It was designed to help athletes and their spouses, mm-hmm. uh, bridge the gap between the stupid things that they've done mm-hmm. and the pain that they've caused. And it was designed to help the spouses, you know, have a, a deeper understanding of why these men are the way that they are and why they do what they do. And then once you've gained that knowledge, then the focus was on now how to, how to heal from this and what to do to get through this. And, and it wasn't like, um, it wasn't a situation where they're pushing, like you got to stay and stand by your man type of thing, mm-hmm. you know, it was really, 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 really just giving you the tools necessary to heal. Um, and, and there are many ways for us to do that as we know, you know, but, um, I don't know, the class was wonderful. Just, um, the knowledge that I gained about men in general and, um, myself and just how I needed to really focus more on myself and get me okay so that I could be okay for, the duration of my life. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, um, really eye opening for me. I still sometimes refer to the notes if, if I need to, sometimes I even share some of it with other women who are, you know, in my inbox asking how I made it through and, you know, for help. So, um, that, that was one class that really helped me reading books also. Mm -hmm. Um, at some point while I was in New York, I mm-hmm. bought um, The Power of a Praying Wife. Um, you know, have you read I, that book? I, I have it on Audible. I listened to it on Audible. It's really good. Yeah, it's a really good book. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those books where, you know, the author, uh, she's like, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but. <laughs> you know, it's the truth. You have to hear this part of the problem is you. And I'm like, hold on now. Uh -uh." Like, now he's the problem. I'm not the problem. But, but honestly, um, I was part of the problem too. Like I didn't have to stay through that. I didn't have to, you know, endure that mess. I could have, and there were times where I was like, you know, I kind of just, we were like strangers together in a home, um, not talking I just did what I had to do and kept it moving. Um, but that benefits nobody. Either you're going to be in a relationship and work it out and love or you're not, you know. So I don't know. That book really helped me. It helped me also understand um, just what a wife's role really looks like in a relationship and what a mm-hmm. husband's role looks like and why men have certain expectations that pretty much are misaligned with ours in different instances. Um, Like men require uh, their sexual needs met, whereas we feel like our emotional needs need to be met before sex is even an option. And it just, Mm -hmm. you know, it bridges the gap between what we see as women and and what they see as men and how we can just cover our families and our husbands with God and his word and, you know, pretty much get through anything. Yeah. You know, that's, 
Oh man, you said so much. But yes, I do love that book too. And I, and I think the one thing that we as women that we don't do that we should do is recognize our contribution to the problem and the issue because we are so quick to to blame the the man and put everything on him not to give the man an excuse right. that's not what we're doing we right. are recognizing our part of the problem because even even me and my relationship you know we haven't been as married as long as you and eddie we've been married for like five and a half ish years and just even recently in my marriage i had to you know like check myself and realize how i'm contributing to the communication issue that's in my marriage so what mm-hmm. am i going to do to change me in order to understand him so things can change for the marriage as a whole you know yeah so that's the first thing and then another thing too to go through as much as you have gone through before eddie and and why you've been married to eddie most women are probably listening to this like oh i would have left him oh right it it, it, it would have been done but i think it takes a lot of strength to hold on and fight for your marriage you know you know what i mean especially if it's mm. not a situation where you're like in danger if you will you know right. where you're in yeah. danger and your kids are in danger and and i think that some women just don't necessarily get get the the kudos for wanting to fight for their marriage because if if the husband messed up like hell we all mess up who perfect mm-hmm. in this world right right if 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 god can forgive us then who are we not to forgive our our husbands and fight for something that we actually that we Mm -hmm. actually want and he wants you know so the class i mean it it definitely takes um you you gotta have god yes and because if i didn't Mm -hmm. for sure i would not still be in this marriage you know Mm -hmm. i would have just left a long time ago um, I'm sure, I mean, you know, this is, this is God's will, you know, it's how I got to look at it in my life. Like he, he, I didn't have to have those babies, you know, God gave me yeah. those babies. And, yeah. um, I know Eddie knows, God knows if I didn't have those babies, I wouldn't have been here. Um, my children kept me grounded in the fact that I have to fight for them. There you why? Yeah. 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 Everything starts with why. Everything right. starts with why. So what's your purpose, Patrice? My kids, right? Okay. So one day I was home mad. I'm in the kitchen cooking. This was recently. Uh maybe I don't know, six months ago. I'm cooking dinner for my ungrateful children. <laughs> um and I'm I'm in the kitchen, you know, playing my music, talking to myself, like I got an attitude. I I hate cooking meat. I hate cleaning meat. Um, I don't even want to feed my children meat, but they act like being a vegan is too hard for them and it's not enough food. So I'm in this struggle of having to do this stuff that I really don't want to do because they're like big people. You know, my I'm five one. My kids outside of the nine year old, 13 on up, everybody is five, 10 or taller. So, mm-hmm. you know, they like to eat. Mm-hmm. And so I have an attitude and I'm standing there cleaning this meat. My back is hurting because I'm making, you know, a bunch of dang meat. And I'm like mad. And I say like, God, like what? And I'm I'm mad because I'm cooking for these kids who won't even pick up a piece of paper off of the floor if they walk past it, even though they dropped it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. I just got an attitude because I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm annoyed with my ungrateful teenagers. Okay. so. I say to God, I'm like, 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 what is my purpose? This cannot be my purpose just to bend over backwards for people who don't even value me. And then I hear this voice say, hey, man, I'm trying to do this without crying. Okay, so then I hear this voice say, and I know this voice is God talking to me. Um, And he says, what if this is your purpose? And I'm like, what? Come again? You know, like, what if this is? This cannot be my purpose just to take care of kids who don't even respect me like they should like no this is not it and he says it again what if this is your purpose what if what if your purpose is to 
be a mom and raise great kids and do it well. I was like, damn, like for real. So I believe, you know, that was God talking to me, like quit complaining. There's people that wish they were in your shoes, wish they had a big family, you know? So I feel like at the current moment, that's my purpose. So you are know? those are those tears of, of joy or are those tears of resentment that that's your purpose and you wanted something else to be your purpose? <laughs> I think these are tears of frustration. Hmm. Because Why? I just feel like, you know how, okay, I grew up having not a lot, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Um, my parents immigrated to America from Belize. I'm the first of that generation to go to college. So I just kind of felt like there was so much more that I wanted to do with my Mm -hmm. life, you know? Mm -hmm. And there still is. And I'm not saying that it's too late. It's just that, again, you know, I put myself on hold to raise my little sister. And then, you know, to have this big family and raise these kids. And I tried to give them everything. I try to give me everything that I never had, you know, yeah. in the hopes that um, they would never have to be searching for it, you know? And so I think I kind of messed that up a little bit. Um, I'm going to blame Eddie more for that than me because <laughs> he, he always has to be over the top with everything, you know, that he does for the kids. <clears throat> I don't think anything happens by accident or by chance, you know, because our our the plan for our lives were, you know, predestined. You know, yeah. I also I'm a God girl and you are too. Mm-hmm. I also believe that God doesn't operate in in confusion. I believe mm-hmm. that our purpose is to, you know, bring us joy and and happiness. Mm-hmm. You know, so um if there's still a little bit of, you know, frustration, ask them for some clarity. What, what, oh yeah, for sure. What, like, you know, what does that mean? You know, because, I go sit in my closet and yeah. I, I, you know, I, I try to figure it out, but I will say that, um, I, you're right. You know, I don't believe anything happens by accident. Ultimately, you know, my purpose is just to use my trials in life to, um, allow my struggles to help somebody else that's going through the same thing or something very similar Mm -hmm. and I think that's what I'm doing Mm -hmm. so that side of things really does you know make me keep me at peace because it is nice to be able to um share my pain and use it for something greater than just hurting Absolutely. Absolutely. And I thank you 100% for sharing your story and being so open and transparent on my podcast. I really, I really appreciate that. But before I let you go, tell us one book or audible book that you've read. Cause I know you mentioned one, the, the praying wife earlier, but mm-hmm. the power of the praying wife earlier, but do you have another book recommendation or audible? You know, book? I just started, um, listening to rich dad poor dad okay that's a classic Um, yeah it's a pretty good book um so far it's really great it's um it's a lesson to be learned in reading that book so um Mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna have my kids read it also yeah 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 or listen to it yeah yeah definitely so one last question when describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase when you hear these two words, okay? Mm-hmm. Self-awareness, purpose, what's your third word? Love. Love, yes. I love that. That's a good one. Self-awareness, purpose, and love. Because when you know who you are and you operate in purpose, you have no choice. It's that love naturally spews out. Right for yourself and for others. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Thank you so much for Patrice for saying yes to have this conversation. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed you. (laughs) Thank you.